The Clone Wars Season 6, The Lost Missions, Thoughts. So, spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this season. And, yeah, continues to love every episode and season so far. This video will be my riffs and analysis for the season, not a review. I will do a spoiler for review once I've watched all seven seasons. Since I won't get into the following in every single episode section in this video, I will just briefly say every episode so far has great creativity and designs. The action is engaging, varied, well choreographed. I'm invested in the stories and characters. So yeah, anything I don't comment on, presume I approve of, not that this is only going to be negative. And I will be talking about the messages it communicates. So let's dive right in. Episode 1, The Unknown. Tup feels compelled to kill one of the Jedi, and anyone who watched Wrench of the Sith reveals this is probably Order 66, but the characters, other than Separatists and Cloners, have no idea. So that's, yeah. I'm not 100% certain if the Spider Separatist General was always a cyborg, but I love it. All orders followed, and no play makes Tup kill Jedi. The surviving act Jedi has an Irish accent. Very cool. Incredibly intense and suspenseful as the shuttle is taken by the droids. Conspiracy. I love how dark these couple of episodes are. And that test on top is intense. And they say they want to do an autopsy. Five explains how important names are to clones. Gives the droid a nickname as well. I appreciate that he gets the droid to help, although it is basically manipulation. He brings up the three laws of robotics. Great reference. They check Tub's head and find nothing. Extremely tense and suspenseful when Fives is hiding from the clone. Oh, did I call him Five? I know his name is Fives. I just, yeah, I misspelt in my notes. When he's hiding from the clone room. And apparently the clone troopers all have nightmares about killing Jedi because of Order 66. That is dark. Fugitive. I continue to love the team-up of AZ and Fives. The latter will not accept being reset. I love how absurd it is that AZ gurgles when his face is underwater. Like, he doesn't have a real mouth, even if there are parts of his body that are taking in water. It's not the same place that he speaks from, and he doesn't breathe at all. So just, yeah, love how ridiculous that is. Act normal, and he's singing and says, Hello, was that normal for you, AZ? Yes. Orders. I really love how we gradually learn more and more about these chips, this whole mystery. Again, anyone who's watched the movie knows where this is going, but there's still a lot of these details we hadn't heard about, like the nightmares. Let down all his life. I like that there's a bar specifically for clones. You don't understand. This thing goes all the way to the top. So it's an elevator. Anakin and Rex listen to Fives, but they don't believe him. And, you know, fair enough. What he's saying does sound like just paranoid delusions. Very disturbing, the slow death of Fives. Seriously, do not show this episode to a small child. Like, it, it's not just, oh, he's shot and he dies. No, he's like, is this the one? He's like... <gasps> You know, and and like slowly dying, and like I think his death takes 10, 15 seconds or something. It's and and he's like, you know, he realizes he's dying, and we see his reaction to his realization that he's dying. Dang, ferret, that's dark. An old friend. And this episode goes into the idea of banks collapsing, lying to authorities about being stable. Huge problem in America and other Western countries today. I'm yet again frustrated by these couple episodes' conflict between Anakin, Padme, and Clovis. They're, they're chased across the ice. Ice, baby! And the bounty hunter attacks them by shooting at the stalactites. Will, have, will any of them hit? They still like might. And that brings us to episode 6, 
the rise of Clovis. Fool me once, shame on, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't get fooled again. Most moons are good people. Anti-racist racist messaging, I approve. And Clovis was going to kiss Padme without her consent. Rapey bastard. Padme expresses she doesn't feel safe around Anakin, which makes a ton of sense. I really appreciate, you know, that, that was something I was saying about the movies that just, yeah. And that brings us to episode 7, Crisis at the Heart. Very intense when the Separatists attack. You are either with us or against us, pointing out that that's an evil point of view. Clovis has brought war where there was no war before. Galactic basic droid, do you speak it? The Disappeared Part 1 Some people really hate this arc. I thought it was fine. Jar Jar claiming that Mace is his servant so that he will be allowed near him by the Degoyans does work. Now there is of course a horrible history with black people being slaves, so I don't know if the episode was trying to lampshade that by making Jar Jar, the character coded as Jamaican, be the one to do it. I'm, I'm not saying only white people had slaves. Now, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm saying that it's a big problem that even today a lot of white Americans won't acknowledge that slavery was bad. You know, it's like the idea isn't that you have to apologize for something your ancestors did. The idea is that you have to acknowledge that there's something wrong there and try to help to deal with it. I don't know why some people get so upset that Jar Jar and the Queen are in love. I think they're very sweet together. I do wish that it didn't have Jar Jar lift his leg slightly when they kiss, since that's seen as a feminine thing. Feminine things are viewed as less masculine than masculine ones in Western society. What I saw was shocking, so you watched the Darman video. Julia and her people have an Indian accent, so I'm really glad that they are not made out to be bad. Jar Jar, calm your stalks. Ahead lies only darkness and evil. You are about to enter the Republican Party. The Disappeared Part 2 Sleep! I see that from here too. So the cultists with scary masks that make threatening noises and kidnap people is pretty racist. It's what a lot of people think of old tribes. Jar Jar's clumsiness continues to be offensive, although he does also, because he's coded as Jamaican, not, you know, clumsiness in general isn't offensive in the media. Although he does also sometimes help out, like he does manage to get Mace his saber back after being responsible for Mace dropping it. And I don't mind that it's with a, a gross out joke. You know, I think he uses his tongue, so that's, yeah. Very cool to see the Great Mother again. Very cool to see her make her own sword and dual mace. Considering how put upon Jar Jar has been in Star Wars, I really appreciate he gets to save the woman he loves. I would have a big problem with this thing of a woman needing to be saved, if not for all the instances in this very show where women are the ones doing the rescuing and it's men needing rescue. Love the massive explosion. And Julia now trusts Jedi, so there's a positive message of overcoming bigotry. The Lost One. Love hearing Tim Curry as Palpatine. Voices. Something difficult I have encountered. Master Yoda, I thought we agreed that you would stop playing Dark Souls. They all meditate as a group. It looks a lot like huddling up. The doctor has a German accent, which could help normalize that for young people, so that's great. This is not the way. Well, you're not a Mandalorian. And that brings us to the penultimate episode, Destiny. Yoda travels to planet Inside Out, goes through some jumping puzzles, enters a cave. A disembodied voice or two say his name. My name it is, Red Out or not. And at the very end of the episode, realize Yoda sees dead people. He doesn't even know they're dead. And that brings us to the finale entitled Sacrifice. 
So yeah, I love when the worms form into one being and say, we are the Sith. Darth Bane is, is pretty cool. I'm, you know, a bit of a mark for a Shredder-type mask. Where you are about to enter, there is absolute darkness. So bring a flashlight. And we see Sifo Diaz. Very cool. And the Coruscant scenes are incredibly tense. For all time? Always? And that is... Okay, I'm gonna real quick... Oh, that's right, there was no... I was going to get into critic quotes, but I ended up not finding... Yeah, the only one I, I found that I thought was interesting was the thing about people hating the, the Mace Jar Jar stuff, and I already talked about that a little, so... Yeah, um, yet again, you know, I continue to... I, I'm going to very quickly go... There we go. So, um, there we go. Yeah, so whether we're talking the overall season, the you know season opener, the season finale, yeah, I continue to like each of these seasons better than the last. And, yeah. Uh, probably gonna get to, you know, there's, season 7 is also fairly short, it's, it, yeah, it's 12 episodes, so I'll probably get to that one in about a week, and I should get to Mandalorian later today, so, yeah, may the force be with you.